Hello everyone and welcome to Grey How Earth Goes Motoring. We're delighted to see you back here for part two and rest assured the pain will all be over in 30 minutes as promised. In a moment you'll be hearing from the fabulous Kieran Haslam from Princess Yachts about how engagement is evolving and the difference between four wheels and no wheels as well as two three-minute presentations from curated solutions in our portfolio from Vocodo on how to better engage with your remote audience and Wagawin on tools to personalize digital advertising. A quick shout out to our sponsors, Investec, Lewis Silkin and Hayes McIntyre, who are standing by to give you free advice on wealth management, legal and financial. On Tuesday, we heard from the boss of Haymarket Automotive, Rachel Prasher, about the changing face of automotive retail and why they're trying, they're not trying to sell chickens to car buyers. If you missed it first time around, there's a link at the end of today's session. What we've seen with the withdrawal from the UK or European markets of previously important players like Mitsubishi is that the need to remain relevant to increasingly digital customers has become paramount. I suspect most of us have seen this meme, which has been doing the rounds about the cause of digital transformation, or even this morning's news that one in every 20 pounds spent in the UK is with Amazon. And that's where we come in. No nonsense, old, wise, and not too infirm. And for those of you who have forgotten what it looks like, this is a picture of us from our Christmas party in 2019. We've curated a raft of fabulous solutions from around the world, covering data and insights, engagement, people, e-commerce, and sustainability amongst others solving many of your challenges in this increasingly digital world. All backed up by a bunch of experienced C-level associates with deep sector expertise. And we exist because there's too much shit out there. Corporates are under permanent attack from an army of inept vendors incapable of selling their wares. We curate so you don't have to. Anyway, enough about us. I'm delighted to be joined today by Kieran Haslam, CMO of Princess Yachts and former CMO at Bentley. And whilst Kieran has forsaken the world of four wheels to wet his whistle on the high seas, he's a true petrol head and lover of French cars with a fabulous rare 1960s Renault Caravelle to his name amongst others. Kieran, it's great to have you here today. Thank um, you very much, Alex. Thank welcome you. Aboard. Um, one of the things I, I suspect which is sort of particularly challenging at the moment is um, with the lockdown it must be very difficult to get out there and as a business like Princess Yachts this must be quite challenging. How do you cope? Well it's, uh, it, it's really really an interesting uh, couple of months not, uh, not for the obvious uh, that you might think. Um, one of the things that we do at, uh, at Princess and particularly in our segment um, is is design, build, and sell. Um, in in my opinion, quite possibly the world's most unnecessary luxury item. And um, it seems strange to say that it's 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 an unnecessary luxury item, but in a strange kind of way, for those who can afford it, who can um, create that element of their of their life uh, and uh, and spend time aboard a boat. It's one of the most magnificent places to be. It's instantly transporting you somewhere. Even if any one of us jumps on the back of a boat, it's still moored at the marina. As soon as you start to get that lapping around on the waves and the boat's even you know, uh, still, uh, still anchored and, uh, and still, you're immediately transported somewhere. And so boating is uh, undeniably one of the most enjoyable things that you can do. And uh, even more so today, because uh, there's an absolute revolution in, uh, in how boats uh, function, how they are uh, formed, and of course, how they operate. And so uh, even uh, the most uh, motion uh, sick or, or seasick of, uh, of those out there no longer have those concerns because of the two forms of stabilization that we use. So that's really opened up the market substantially. Uh, but being unnecessary means that we have to do absolutely everything on the customer's terms. And we've noticed that uh, traditionally we'd go all around the globe, we'd go to beautiful locations, Cannes, you know, uh, Miami, 
Monaco and we'd take our wares and put it on display and then people would uh, gather and, uh, and go through them and, uh, and walk through them. And it is really important because they're not buying a, a product that they you know, can, can operate and then park up in, their, in, in a garage, shut the roller door and walk around all, uh, all sides. Uh, they're buying quite considerably large uh, products. Uh, which are more like second homes. And so the physical interaction with the space is just so important. So when COVID hit, uh, we went, well, oh, we're gonna fall off a cliff edge here and this is going to be uh, the first place which is gonna suffer. But what we found was that wasn't the case at all. Uh, in fact, our sales from 2020, as a surprise to us, um, started to exceed uh, all of the records that we had set month by month. And we literally had a run of around about seven months of record sales in 2020, uh, which is sort of a bit strange to grapple with at first, but then you immediately realize that what boating is, is a, a second home. And the nature of boats has changed. They're not caverns, uh, sailboats where you duck in below and uh, you really want to come up for air. Uh, they are glorious luxury apartments that you can move around and be safely in and spend time with friends and family off your choice uh, in the zones of safety and with the, you know, with the right food and, uh, and, uh, and beverage to, uh, to enjoy. So really COVID sort of made what we do even more relevant because there was a, quite a tangible, uh, rational reason to start enjoying boating again. And so the whole industry just blossomed. I mean, there wasn't a, a, a boat company, no matter how small or how big a boat, uh, that was able to sort of keep up with demand uh, that came out of the second half of 2020. What we quickly realized was we're such an unnecessary over the top kind of a luxury concept that in order to feel us and experience us, we need to be engaging with our clientele in a totally different way. We weren't ready for that at all. And uh, shame on us, for it really, because these tools that we're all using, even the one that we're using right now, how many of us who are signed into the Zoom session had used Zoom prior to uh, the global pandemic last year? Uh, probably very, very few. <laughs> and so, you know, th these tools have always been around, you know, Cisco and Skype and the rest of it. And yet I was still living in a world where I was traveling more than 180 days away from uh, Plymouth uh, and my home every year and going all over the world and going to meet the, the clients. So this really sp spun it around on its head and we had to think really differently about how we engage. What we realized was it wasn't good enough uh, to sort of lock a time in and say, come and join us and we'll have this, you know, this interchange of, of an exchange of information um, and then done and dusted, we've done our job and you can buy the boat. Uh, we really had to think about how that kind of delivery mechanism can make them feel special. And so in order to do that, we had to really present ourselves as individuals. And I think, Alex, you and I have spoken about this uh, once before. Uh, one of the things that the boating industry has, and I, I say this in comparison to the many, many years I spent in automotive, uh, and I also grew up in, in, in a family of automotive, uh, so I, I'm, I'm really tuned in to how automotive has, over time, like many other industries, really dialed out personality really dialed out the individual and uh you know my favorite scene in, in one of the greatest films of all time pulp fiction quentin tarantino is right at the uh, at the end of the film and uh, uh when, when you've got <laughs> when you've got samuel jackson and john travolta's characters uh, in an exchange talking about how personality goes a long way it's so relevant it's so relevant for any brand and what i've noticed in my time in branding is that for the pursuit of Set corporate sensibility, corporate identity, and those kinds of what they call professional constructs, uh, we would dial out, you know, the, the dangers of personalities. You know, that person can go a bit off piste, so let's dial it out, let's script them, uh, and let's control the messaging. And what we're finding is, in, particularly in our industry, that's so far from the truth, you can't do that. And the reason you can't do that is you just can't go and, and uh, convince the customer off the biggest princess out there that they need to buy that princess because well what the heck do I know about owning a boat which costs 22 million pounds uh, I don't I, I, I've never bought a boat for 22 million pounds I probably never will and as I like to often say I'll probably try to have a crack at solving world hunger before I'd spend 22 million pounds of my money on a boat 
but I'm not our customers and I'm not in their situation. So when any of us at Princess have a conversation with our customers, our clientele, what can we actually bring to the table? We can't stand there and say, you need to buy this boat. What we can say is, this is what we love about these boats. This is why we're passionate about it. This is our approach. This is what's gone into it. But it's more down drilling down into that personality and we celebrate personality. And we had to find a way to deliver that virtually. So we ended up having a lot of one-to-one -one engagement with our clients. It wasn't about these presentations, these large sessions where they all logged in. It was one at a time, one-to-one. -one. And then to make it even more personal, we started to do some really interesting things. We made sure that we sent them a beautiful little hamper in, in, in you know, Brazil. And, uh, and, you know, we had our chairman receive the same hamper and he'd say, join me for a, for a gin and tonic at 5.30 on Friday. The Brazilian client would, uh, would sign into to Zoom and they'd have their little hamper that they received that uh, earlier that morning. Our chairman would have his uh, sitting in Wembury here in the Southwest and, uh, and, it, and they'd share the experience. And, and that would sort of create this slightly different level of intimacy. And then, of course, the conversation, you know, he, he called me up one evening and said, I just spoke to that owner uh, in, in Brazil and I, we didn't talk about the boat at all. Uh, he is going to buy the boat, actually, which is really interesting. But we only talked about um, carbon fiber uh, bicycles. You know, that, that's literally what happened. And so we had to sort of rethink that digital and that virtual interaction and bring it so much more closer to personality. And uh, these are, as I, as I often say, our, our clientele uh, can very easily not just purchase the product, uh, but they're extremely powerful and wealthy individuals and they can, they can buy princess outright. So it's very much always on their terms and how we interact with them. Um, we never try to superficially or with pretensions uh, thrust on them what we think they should feel or think. Uh, but it, it's more sort of like a service approach um, that you would find in a hotel, in a, in a, in a, in a good hotel, uh, in terms of how we interact with our clients. What they've adored and what they've loved is that they can do this. And there are very few luxury brands in the world, certainly with the gravity of Princess, uh, where any of our customers can have a one-to-one -one Zoom with the chairman of the company. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be really hard pressed to find a car company today which would uh, which would be willing to do that for a customer, and um, and you know that's that's where the the personality thing I think was sort of manifested via this new virtual uh, playground we're in. So to to sort of take it in a different direction, you you talk about personality and obviously the need to uh, embrace digital to a much greater extent at the moment, but sort of going back to the link with four wheels, I mean obviously. A yacht costing £22 million is rather different to a Bentley, say, costing £150,000, £200,000. Are, are there similarities in behaviour and in characteristics between the customers? There are, actually. And, and when I first entered the boating industry and, and, and started at Princess, I, it, it took me quite some time to grapple with it. Um, you're so programmed in the car industry that you know the product is so so superior and um, and and will dictate how everyone else's knees should quake in response to the product. Um, and in the boating world, it just sort of doesn't operate in the same way. And what I found was I, I'm obviously supremely you know focused on uh, on you know details and uh, and I, I love cars as as you know. Um, and so you can't help but have conversation about these things. So when you meet owners and you're having conversations with them in the yachting sphere, uh, more often than not, you have conversations about cars. And when you have conversations about cars, you realize that very quickly they are. There are so many synergies. For example, I was at Bentley and, you know, in many ways, Princess is almost like the Bentley in, in, in the yacht industry. It sort of holds that kind of position. It's more about the details and the quality and the longevity and everything that's gone on under the skin to make it what it is. And, uh, and when you start talking to them, you very quickly realize they go, mm, yeah, Bentley, oh, I love Bentleys, yeah. Uh, and I, I think I've got one still. And, and that was the difference. I think I've got one still. And so the, the purchase consideration points are just so massive. I mean, you, you need to remember that even if, you're, if you have a big princess, you, you have to be willing to write a check on a really big princess for in excess of a million pounds, even if you're not using it annually because you're keeping it somewhere, you've got crew aboard, 
uh, you're, you know, winterizing the product. When you are using it, it's, you know, 30, 40,000 pounds to fill the tank up. So, you know, it's a different proposition entirely. Um, you know, of course, there are lots of people who own Bentleys who, uh, who spend a lot of money on hotel experiences and travel experiences. And it's very similar, similar to that. I think the brands stand for, for craftsmanship and they stand for that kind of detail mm -hmm. and that excessive detail. So, you know, you look at, you peel the, the carpet up and you look underneath at areas which uh, no one will ever see and you know that the quality is there. So from that perspective, the customers reacted to the products in, in similar ways. And I felt that very much Princess and Bentley have that in synergy. Well, look, um, that, that is brilliant. And actually at this point, going back to a comment you made earlier, you were talking um, about um, video calling with folk, etc. And at this point, I'd love to bring in Marcus, uh, sorry, uh, Mar Marcus from Vicodo, who's going to just talk us through how Vicodo can help you or help companies engage with their customers on a remote basis. So Marcus, over to you. Thank you very much, Alex. It's a pleasure speaking here today. Vicodo is a live video and chat communications platform with CRM elements. Vicodo allows businesses to connect in an easy and effortless way with their customers. Our software as a service solution works on every web browser on the desktop and on mobile devices. No additional software or app installation necessary. One of our best feature is the branding capability. It looks like the company is using their very own tailor-made video solution. We are working with many different industries from agriculture to telemedicine to sales to insurances, just to name a few of them. Of course, they have all different use cases, but one thing in common. They want to be more efficient and they want to communicate with the customers in a more personal way. Face-to-face -face video calls are a perfect solution for that. Today, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about how insurances are using Vicodo for claim settlement and how our solution helped them to increase customer satisfaction by 20% and how it ends in up to 30% reduction in claim expenses. Let's start with the traditional process. In our example, a broken car. As you can see here on the slide, many people are involved. It takes time, sometimes days, sometimes weeks. There's often a back and forth, data is not structurized, and it costs a couple of hundred euros for letting an adjuster drive to the customers and review the claim. Since the beginning of COVID-19 and its various restrictions, this process is no longer working. The safety of customers and employees has become a major concern. We have the perfect solution for that. With Vicodo's intuitive dashboard, you can speed up the entire process. The adjuster has everything that he needs without leaving his office or his home. Let's take a look at the streamlined claim settlement process with Vicodo. When a customer reports the claim, the adjuster can invite him right away via email or SMS. They can start the call instantly. The customer is now in the role of a cameraman and the adjuster is guiding him. He can take pictures and make notes. The customer can talk on the spot about his claim and after about 20 minutes, the fully GDPR compliant review is done. Everybody is just happy. Of course, Vicodo is not only for broken cars. We are also working with car dealers who are using Vicodo for sales and customer support. For them, it was not easy to find the right video assistance tool. White label capabilities and the option to connect via API with existing systems are usually not part of off-the-shelf software. Vicodo can be fully integrated via API into existing workflows. Thank you very much. In case you have any questions, I would love to answer all of them. Kieran, over to you, any questions? Sure, firstly, um, <laughs> Marcus, I noticed that that claim, uh, example claim that you had must have been for the Millennium Falcon, um, <laughs> judging by the, by the username that claimed it. Um, how, does yeah. it how, does this, how does this differ, Marcus, on a, on a more serious note, from quite simply you know, picking up WhatsApp and video calling that contact or you know, videoing it and emailing that contact. What, what are the other benefits of, I, I guess it's in real time, but what are, the, what are the main benefits of that? 
So yes, um, you're absolutely right. Everything is in real time. And uh, for us, I think the most important thing is that you can communicate your own brand because you use today quite often um, Zoom, 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 Zoom. And um, here we think we don't want to use WhatsApp, Zoom or Facebook for, for a very, very serious um, conversation. That's why we are using our system. And um, you can integrate everything into your existing uh, workflows. So it can be seamlessly integrated. And of course, it's fully GDPR compliant and you as a customer are in a driver's seat. Okay, so there's a, there must be a much heightened level of security then behind it. Absolutely, everything is end-to-end um, -end encrypted. You have many different security levels. You can decide everything. So if a customer can, um, for example, adjust text messages after he send it, or um, you can add additional layers that he has to enter a security code and everything is um, well designed. So for example, when I send you a link for today at 5 p.m. When we have an appointment, you can't enter that link 15 minutes after the, um, the, the appointment. Right. And Marcus, one, one last question on this. Um, you know, when you, when you have damaged the Millennium Falcon and uh, you need to take that, that reference imagery um, or, or video content, does it make a, does it force you into some kind of a template like you have in, I know in, for example, in the car industry, if you're a Porsche dealer taking a picture of a, of a pre-owned Porsche, you know, it won't allow you to capture the picture until you, you know, fulfill certain constraints. Are you able to set this up to do the same thing for consistency of like damage, uh, capturing damage or, or anything like that? Definitely. So here uh, within our product, there's always the personal touch. So the face to face communication and the operator or the adjuster can tell you exactly what to do. OK, please go a little bit closer or uh, maybe move the camera a little bit. Um, that's definitely possible. Yes. OK. And, and sorry, one, one last final one uh, in terms of the branding. Uh, capabilities of it is it just static branding are you able to sort of uh, include um, you know video content as well from a branding perspective you can do everything what uh, what you want so um, for example a couple of our customers asking hey is it also possible to integrate the um, the fuff icon so that's the small icon you see on top in your browser for every tab so we are very very focused on small details and branding means branding means everything great excellent thanks for that marcus thank you very much i'd now love to bring in nico uh, from wagawin to tell us how to now make these digital journeys more engaging. So Nico, over to you. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me and hi everyone. I'm Nico from Wagavin and uh, as you can imagine, we do not sell cars, but instead we make mobile device users feel appreciated. Let me introduce the technology we invented. It's called Living Ads and Living Ads bring interaction elements known from social media to the open web. What you see here is a normal website. However, the ad you see isn't static. It's presented with a Tinder mechanic. Users in this case choose their favorite coffee taste by swiping the corresponding card to the right. And it goes without saying that everything is tracked and shared with the coffee producer in real time. This is just one of plenty examples. We have many more living ads, but they all have one thing in common, leveraging unlearned mobile behavior. So the question is, why do brands use living ads? Using living ads is as easy as pie. Our technology basically turns any existing video or display ad into a living ad within a few minutes. The reach is endless as we have access to all mobile websites and apps globally. There is absolutely no scalability issue, no matter which country in the world. Living ads generate up to five times more user data than standard solutions. Why? Because standard solutions only generate data in case a user clicks. Just ask yourself, when did you click on an ad for the very first last time? on your mobile device. 
And living ads do not only generate outstanding results for upper and mid funnel campaigns, hence awareness campaigns, but they also unlock data that will boost the lower funnel activities. The extracted data is used to approach users based on their interests, no matter where they are. BMW M3 to the right while reading the news in the morning, BMW M3 will appear in your Insta feed during the lunch break. So that's basically what we do. Thanks very much for your attention and happy to, to answer your questions. Kieran, over to you. Uh, Nico, the first thing that strikes me is how, how are you seeing that response mechanism? Uh, are you finding that it, there's a degree of, obviously you've demonstrated that there's a degree of positive sentiment towards it where they're actually going through the journey, arriving somewhere and then directly speaking to BMW and downloading more content uh, or more information or, or filling out a contact form. Are you seeing there's a, there's a small portion of uh, sort of neutral or negative sentiment where people are sort of rejecting the idea that you're aware of these likes and dislikes and presenting something to them? Really good one. Um, so we have brands that ask us to not give users, that's, that's true, not give, giving users the, the possibility to give negative feedback, right? So if you don't want to get negative feedback as a brand, you can just make sure that the user just cannot say anything bad about you. Question is, do you want that? So we always recommend to also give people the possibility to give ne negative feedback because you can obviously derive a learning from that. So, but in the end, it's up to the brand. We just offer the framework and you can ask uh, the, the users whatever you want. You can give them whatever kind of feedback mechanism that you would like to give to them. So we recommend to also go for the negative one to derive some learnings. But if you as a brand, for whatever reason, don't want to hear it, just don't, don't give the possibility. And presumably then with that, targeting is absolutely key, right? Because whoever it is that you're speaking to is going to then determine uh, the high degree of the findings. And if you're targeting the wrong people who aren't interested at all in you know, uh, an 87 year old in, uh, in Hungary is maybe not uh, so interested in a BMW M3. Who knows, maybe they are. <laughs> but how, how, are you, how are you approaching that kind of targeting? Yeah, so good question. The BMW in this case, BMW M, um, so the cars are even more expensive, not a Bentley, but uh, still an M. Um, they predefine the audience we have to target for them. So they will tell us what's my typical target audience, which I don't know in this case exactly, but there's a target audience. And we start by showing our solution only to this target audience. And within this target audience, we will then like really have this granular knowledge, what is really of interest for this person, this person, and this person. But you're right, we, not, we will not target an 85 year old man and we will also not target 10 year old kids because they will not be able to afford it. And the other person may be too old to drive such a fast car. Right. And I'm, I'm going to have to cut you off there, guys, but thank you very much. I mean, thank you heard from Kieran about everything from one to one engagement with clients, shared experiences and personality. We then heard from Vicoda about how video can bring customer engagement to life and how they've saved the insurance industry significant sums of money. We then heard from Nico just now about how they've helped BMW launch new models and ensuring that digital ads are more engaging whilst building data. If you missed any of our previous sessions and would like access to recording, please just let us know via bingo at greyhairworks.com. Otherwise, make a note in your diaries for our next Thursday tea time at 3.30 on Thursday, the 25th of February, where we'll be joined by the Chief Digital Officer at the National Institute for Health Research, who's the former Senior Director of Digital Product at ASDA. Thanks as ever to our sponsors. Thanks you. Thank you for joining and a huge thank you for the speakers for uh, taking part today. Look forward to catching up with you soon.